this night for very accounted a minister living. It's a privilege, brothers and sisters, because God has been faithful and God has been on our side. I, I don't know how this week has been. I, I really don't know, but it was a great experience to me to minister to this platform. And uh, I'm glad that today as we conclude and do God's work and as we share the word of the Lord, let's keep praying for each other and let's keep hope alive because it is this hope that we have in Jesus. And in the world of so many happenings, Christ is our only hope. Uh, and it, don't, don't stay disconnected. We live in a global village. The world is a global village. Don't stay disconnected. The best thing you can do for me is only get in touch by subscribing to my YouTube channel and also getting in touch on Facebook as we share the word of God every day. Just get on YouTube, find Pastor Molunda Chihoko, leave it the uh, message there. Go to Facebook. I find Pastor Mulunda Chihoko will get in touch and continue praying for each other. I, I want to draw your attention this night to the book of Mark, chapter number number 15. As we look at the message when you feel rejected or abandoned by God. In Mark chapter number 15, verse number 34. The Bible has this to say. The, the, the Bible has this to say. The Bible begins by saying, at, at three o'clock, Jesus cried out loud. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabakatani. That means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, not I, but Christ, be honored and exalted. Not I, but Christ, be heard, be seen, be known. Not I, but Christ, in every look and action. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I don't know how this week has been to you. And I don't know how it is going right about now. But Paul, an apostle of God, says we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. In other words, that despite what we have been through, Christ has been on our side. You can still look at you can still look at your problem and look at God. Compare the two is greater than the other. Tell your problem you are a subclass. Tell your problem you are a subclass to me. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. In other words, that we have been with the Lord and God has been on our side. My, my greatest concern in this world, listen, brothers and sisters, my greatest concern is in this world is not whether God is on my side. My greatest concern in this world it to be is to be on the side of God for God is is always right. And I want to tell you today that the, your greatest concern in your Christian journey, your greatest concern in your Christian walk, is it should not be whether God is on your side. Your greatest concern should be God, be in endeavor always to be on the side of God because God is always right. And in the book of Mark, chapter number 15, the Mark writes about Jesus as a servant. But in chapter number 15, on, 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 in, uh, around three o'clock, Jesus cried out loud, uh, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabakatan, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When you feel rejected by God or when you feel abandoned by God, why, listen, brothers and sisters, why does loving God allow bad things to happen? Have you ever felt that God has left you? Have you ever felt God has rejected you? Have you ever felt that God has abandoned you? And I want you to understand uh, uh, the word to cry. It means when you go to the Greek origin, you discover that the word here to cry, where Jesus cried out loud, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabagatani. The, the word to cry, it means to scream. To scream. It literally, Jesus screamed like a normal human being. I remember growing up as a child where you are beaten, beaten, beaten. I still have a question for my father and my mother. You know, I, and, and to the fathers and the mothers that are on this platform, uh, why will you beat me and you're beating me still you tell me to be quiet? It doesn't much, not make sense. Allow me to scream out my pen. Perhaps that's how I will get comfort. And, 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 and Jesus in this passage of scripture, that he is hanging at the cross and it, it becomes painful and bitter. And what does he do? It literally, Jesus cried. Not only did he cry, when you go to the original language, Jesus screamed like any of us can scream. Now you scream your ears out. You scream your voice out. Jesus screamed, my father, my father, why? And you need to understand, Jesus, at this moment, and, 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 and to scream, it also it, it is also translated as, as the forsaken. Forsaken means rejected. Forsaken means abandoned. 
and forsaken means deserted. So Jesus at the cross felt deserted. Jesus at the cross felt forsaken. And Jesus at the cross felt abandoned. And, and, and I think about Jesus before dying at the cross. He was crucified, left alone. Judas betrayed him. And, and, and some of us, me, 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 I appreciate Judas a lot than, than Peter. In my life, I appreciate, because to me, Judas is a hero of salvation. He's not a coward like Peter. You know, you know, you know even Ellen White says, the scene of Judas was, was, was not that worse as Peter, because Peter denied Jesus, Jesus in daylight, broad daylight. He says, I don't know this lad. I don't know this folk. I don't know this fella. But, but, but Judas, Judas in his mind, he, he, he thinks when I sell Jesus, uh, they get to him. Jesus does a miracle, and after they're doing a miracle and he disappears, I will still remain with the money. When they come to me, I'll tell them, hey, man, hey, I sold him to you. But but Peter is a coward, man. Like some of us, Peter walked with Jesus for three and a half years, but still you, he used to walk with a knife in his jacket. When the battle arose, he enters, cut off the ear. Like some of us, for many years we've been Adventists, for many years we've been Christians, but you still don't believe that Jesus can protect us, Jesus can defend us, Jesus can be there for us. We still not believe when, when, del when promotion delay, we go to Sangomas. But in terms of conceding delay, we go to the witch doctors. Then we are coward Christians. And I want you to understand this, brothers and sisters. Peter rejected him. The crowd left him. He was beaten. He felt abandoned. Listen, brothers and sisters. He felt abandoned. He, he, he was left, rejected at the cross in that moment by his father. And I want you to understand, it is painful, brothers and sisters, when you feel rejected, left, abandoned, or deserted. Many of us can relate. Some of us, we had, we had partners who ripped our hearts. Some left a new hacking. Maybe it was parents that left you. Your spouses, your best friends, your workmates, everyone deserted you. Maybe your employers rejected you. But it is worse. Listen, brothers and sisters, it is worse. Dear friends, to feel rejected by God. It is worse, brothers and sisters, to feel abandoned by God. I, I, and I want you to understand, brothers and sisters. There you pause and ask God, God, where are you? Why is this happening to me? He, why in my family? Don't you care what we are going through? Listen, brothers and sisters, I realize that most of us feel that way. When, whenever people feel that way, they end up rejecting God. And not only rejecting God, many at the end, they get bitter with God and question the realities of his promises. Many of us quit coming to church, quit praying, giving up on God and giving up trusting God. And I want to, I want to give you three responses as, as we conclude and, and wind up this week. I want to give you three responses that you have when you feel abandoned by God, when you feel rejected by God. And I want you to have just three responses. From today, I want you to learn some only three responses when you feel abandoned by God. Right away, you handle your screaming by to God. And I want you to understand, this is a moment when Jesus himself addressed his father. My God, my God, because it was painful. It was too much. He could not comprehend it. He, 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 he could not know how to feel it. That is why he screamed it loud. My God, my God, why? He recognized that this is too much. I cannot handle it. It is unbearable. This is, 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 is stressful enough. And But he still says, my God, my God. Listen, brothers and sisters, I want you to understand something. And uh, number one response is that remind yourself when you feel abandoned by God, when you feel rejected by God, when you see what, and I, I know I have a question. What did you do? When you see God, you pray. You see God doing it for your neighbors. You see God doing it for your friends. You see God doing it for your, for others. But still, you, he does not come through. What do you do when you are the victim of God's silence? What do you do? Listen, brothers and sisters, I want you to remind yourself that God loves you. And, 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 and before you look for the evidence of the absence of God, look for the evidence of the presence of God. Because remind yourself, God loves you and he is with you. God has not left you even on your, listen, brothers and sisters, even on your worst day of your life, he is still with you. Hebrews 13 verse 5 says, I will never forsake you or leave you because God is with you. And I want to tell you that 
you are not alone because of the sick. Take your hard question to God. Take your hard questions to God. Why did, tell, tell your God, ask your God, why did they die? Why did they leave me? Why am I rejected? Why is this cancer? Why is this disappointment? When? And how, where do I go? Why did you allow them to go? Why him, Lord? He will give you the grace and he will help you. Human beings cannot help you sometimes. Human beings can let you down. And human beings cannot fully understand and comprehend what you're going through. But all your hard questions, take them to the Lord. Why only him? Why me? Why my family? Why my children? He will give you the grace and the strength to carry you through. And he, he, I want you to understand that he was abandoned at the cross. And, and that was just part of his story, not the entire story. He was abandoned at the cross. And that was just part of his story, not the entire story. And we all know how it ended, brothers and sisters. On the third day, he arose from the grave. And, and, and there was a purpose in the pain. That, 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 that was part of his story. And I want to tell you something. There's something significant about the third day in, in the word of the Lord. And, and in what is so significant? On the third day, he went to the wedding in the kind of gully. What happens? It turns water into wine. Three days, Jonah sleeps in the belly of the fish. And on the third day, he's vomited by the show. And, and you need to understand, on the third day, Jesus rose, oh, oh, rose, rose, rose from the grave. And I want to tell you, tell somebody, today, no matter how long it takes, your third day is coming. Listen, brothers and sisters. It may be painful. It may be stressful. It may be decompobulating. But I'm here to submit and tell somebody that your third day is coming. To somebody, it may take years. To somebody, it may take months. To somebody, weeks. But all in all, keep waiting. Hey, come on. Keep trusting on the Lord. Because it will come to pass. And, 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 and that's what Jesus felt at the cross. It was just a part of his story. You and me know how the story ended. On the third day, he rose again. And, and I'm here to tell you that there was purpose in his pain. And it, because it was a part of his story. And, and First Corinthians First Corinthians 13 and in 12 says, we only know it is part for now. One day we will understand it. It, 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 is, it was not a chapter of your life. Let it not define the entire life of yours. Because of a, a moment and, and a chapter of your life. Let it not define, brothers and sisters. Persevere and keep trusting, keep believing. Let it not de, 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 de make you, you don't trust God because it is just a chapter, a season. We live in a spiritual world. Such a bound to happen, but let us not turn our back on God. Let us not turn around and, and, and leave God out. And I'm here to tell somebody, can Listen, brothers and sisters, turn your what God, your why God into what God. Another response that you must have when you feel rejected or abandoned by God, turn your what God to why God. T -t rather, turn your why God to what God. Turn your why God to what God. Ask God, what are you about to teach me? Because Hebrews tells us, 5, 8, that Jesus learned obedience from the pain he suffered. He, he, he turned his white God. Have you forsaken me? And Jesus stayed at the cross because of what God. He remained at the cross because of what God. And what was he? And the what was to save humanity. The what was to save you and me today. Listen, brothers and sisters, if, if, we, if we don't turn the, 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 the what God to, to, to the why God to what God, we tend to question him and his character. We tend to, to question his promises, questioning the character of God and goodness of God. And we end up losing out on the promises and the love and the, and, 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 and the message of God. Learn to turn to what God. When we do that, we learn to trust God. Well, when you say, what do you want to teach me, Lord? What is it that I want to learn? You learn to trust him. Instead of saying, why, why, why? You will not see the promises of God. You will not learn to appreciate the Lord. You will not learn to believe in the Lord. But when you say, what, Lord, are you about to teach me? What, Lord, are you going to teach me? You will learn to trust and believe his promises. Asking God, what do you want me 
to do through me. What do you want to do through me? Many times when we encounter pain, rejection, betrayal, God has a purpose in the pain. On, on Jesus' worst day, listen, brothers and sisters, on Jesus' worst day ever, on Jesus' worst day ever, he paid the sin debt for humanity at the cross. It was Jesus' worst day. But on Jesus' worst day ever, he paid the debt for sin of humanity at the cross. And that is why the cross today is a constant reminder that mankind cannot serve itself. And, 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 and at, at the foot of the cross, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and, and listen, brothers and sisters, when you are, when you get at the foot of the cross, at the foot of the cross, there is no Shona on the belly. There is no Zulu or Kosa. There is no Bemba or Tonga. There is, there is no there, there is no Hutu or Tusu. There is no Muganda or Munyanko. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ. There is no black or white. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ at the foot of the cross. And on Jesus' worst day ever, what do we get and understand is that he paid the dead sin for humanity. Hallelujah, somebody out there. On Jesus' worst day ever, it was his worst day, but he paid the dead sin. And today I can pause and sing a song. Jesus paid it all because on his way today, he paid the dead sin that I owed. Listen, brothers and sisters, on his painful day, when he felt rejected, where was the purpose? And what was the purpose? There was purpose in the pain. And the father did something powerful through Jesus Christ. Well, that is worthy celebrating today. He did something powerful through Jesus Christ. On the worst day of Jesus' life, the Father did something celebrating, worthy celebrating to the rather. And, 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 and you and me, we can discover and find out that we have forgiveness of sin because there was purpose in the pain of Jesus at the cross. As if that, not is not, that is not enough, the Bible says, Hebrews 12, 12 says, Jesus endured the pain of the cross because he was forecast on what God wanted to do through him, to do through him. Jesus endured, endured the pain of the cross because he was focused on what God, not why, on what God wanted to do through him. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, we must endure uh, the pain of our situation because we must focus on what God wants to do through us. And I want you to understand, you know, Paul understands it better. The thorn in the flesh. God used that thorn to do great things and great work through him. He has the thorn in the flesh. But God, through that thorn, did great and mighty things. God uses our greatest pain to launch a path for our greatest calling. Think about life. Now, listen, brothers and sisters. To me, I, I can think about myself. Uh, I sexually abused by, at the age of 12. And, and uh, sexually abused at the, way, at the age of 12 myself by my own auntie at the age of 12. And my, my legs, I, I, by the time I was in grade five, both of my legs were crippled. I couldn't walk past inside my legs. Nothing could happen. Nothing good could come out. It was a pain. I, 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 I felt I, I, I stopped walking for three months. They could carry me in and out, toilet everywhere. And it was a painful moment, brothers and sisters. I had to go to the hospital. They drew the bones of my legs bring out the past. It was a painful situation of my life. And, and, and I could not comprehend it for over many, many years. The pain of being sick, being taken to the theater, being the asking God, Lord, why, why? It was painful to me. I felt it for many years, but it was a launching path today to be a living testimony and bring hope to somebody because I know where God has brought me from. I know how painful it was. You know, being abused by your own at the age of 12. Not only as if that is not enough. Your own leg could not carry you. They carry you. You, you know, you, learning how to walk again after many years like a baby. There was no hope, but Jesus came through. So I, I know I have a heart for those who are rejected, abused or sick. God can turn your pen to use it for his purpose. God 
to my misery to use this as a means to help other broken people who feel that they can't overcome because there's power in the purpose and pain that we go through. Listen, brothers and sisters, when you, when the, the third response I want you to have today is that when you can't trace God's hand, trust his heart and his promises. If you can't trust his hand anywhere in your life, if you can't see him, listen, brothers and sisters, you must trust, trust God's hand. You must trust him and, and, and trust his promises. When you're going through a pain, rejection or trial or sickness, job, joblessness, always remember God is not powerless. Listen, always remember God is not powerless. He had the power to call thousands of his angels to cut the cross, yet he stayed at the cross and trusted in his father's plan. Ah, I don't know if you're hearing me this evening, this morning, this night. He had the power to call thousands of angels to cut the cross down or to rescue him from the cross. But what does he do? He remained at the cross and trusted in his father's plan. And he said, you know, listen, this is why it gets interesting. When you go to Luke 20, 20, 23, 46, he stayed at the cross where he has the power to call the angels to come and rescue him. But he stayed at the cross. It is painful, little brothers and sisters. It is painful at the cross. But he says, Father, <laughs> you don't get it. He stays at the cross. It, it is painful at the cross. But he stays at the cross and he says, Father, unto thy hand I commit my spirit. Jesus, he is feeling the pain. He cannot comprehend it. But he, is, he remained at the cross and trusted in his father's plan. And, and he says, Father, into thy hand I commit my spirit. Listen, brothers. My God, listen. My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? He still says, Lord. Yes, I feel for second, but into thy hand I commit my spirit. In another word, he turned up his trust into his father above. Why is it not easy? Now listen, why it is not easy, but until you trust, you it is painful, but until you can trust. You know, what did Jesus is saying when he says, Father, into thy hand I commit my spirit. He says, it is not easy, Lord. But still, I trust you. It is painful, but I still I trust you. It is hurting me, but I still I trust you. I cannot comprehend it, but I still I trust you. I want to tell somebody today, where are you, God? Why is this happening? I'm here to tell you and remind you, don't let a bad day cause you turn you turn you. down your trust in God. Don't let them, I want you to understand that there's something God can do in your life. There's something God can do in your life because he is a faithful, loving God. This is the child of God. You need to understand that there is a God in heaven. And I'm here to tell somebody, I'm here to remind some somebody, at times it is not easy. It is not easy to say amen. At times it is not easy to say amen. Because a man says, let it be so. A man says, uh, let it be so. At times, it's not easy to say amen when you're going through tough times. It is not easy to say amen when you're going through tough times. Still, you can say amen, but you can still say amen to the promises of God. Amen. God, your character has not changed. When you say amen, God, your character has not changed on a bad day. God, your promises have not changed on my bad day. God, a man, your character has not changed on my bad day. It has, it is hard, but I trust you, Lord. You can be confused and decombobulated. God is with you. I trust you even when I can't trust you. I trust you even when I can't trust you. Child of God, child of God, even when you can't trust God, he, you can still trust him. And today, today as we pray, Today, as we watch it, and today, as we wind up, I want to tell you today, do you feel rejected? Do you feel abandoned? Do you feel deserted by God? There is a God in heaven who still feels our pain. Some of us are living testimony of where God has brought us from. I don't know if there's somebody here who has not yet accepted Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior in their life. 
I want to tell somebody, you can live in this world without Jesus. And you can live well without Jesus, but you cannot afford to die without him. You didn't hear me. You can live in this world without Jesus, but you cannot afford to die without him. And I'm here to submit to you, child of God. Even if you don't care and you don't get concerned about Jesus' presence in your life, he cares about your presence in his kingdom. And this morning, if there's somebody who is not yet baptized and they have not yet accepted Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior, you can see the organizers of this program. Wherever you are, there's somebody who will connect you to the pastor nearby and you'll be baptized and you walk into the newness of life. You will be a new creature. Whatever, why hard, why Lord, will no longer be part of your life. And it will be a new chapter in your life. I want to submit to you, there is a God in heaven. Peradventure, you're here, you're not yet baptized. God loves you and he wants to connect with you and walk with you all the days of your life. God is still in the business of serving his children. God is still in the business of helping us of a situation. He is a faithful and loving God. When you feel abandoned by God, there is a God in heaven. Let us, let us pray. Our God and our Father, glory and honor be to your name. You've been speaking to us the entire seven days. We honor and exalt your name for your faithfulness. Perhaps we've gone astray in any way we ask for forgiveness. Where we did well, glory and honor be to your name. Some of us have felt abandoned, rejected by you. Words run out when we want to pray and ask you. It becomes painful, stressful, and Lord, we cannot comprehend it. We cannot understand it. Some of us tears roll down because it's too much, Lord. But for, for the sake of somebody's faith in prayer this moment and time, I pray, may you dry their tears. Heal the broken spirit. Mend the broken hearts because you are their God. There's nowhere they can run to. Others run to the rich doctors to give themselves temporary comfort and happiness. But we know our true hope comes from a God who created the heavens and the earth. Somebody's marriage is not okay. Somebody's children have gone wayward. Spouses have gone wayward. Our parents, our siblings may not be feeling well. Others are mourning their loved ones. It is too much for them. But we know you are a God who is never far away from us, but only a prayer away. You are mighty and you are a God who will never be defeated. We know what you are capable of doing and what you've done. And may you be with us for us. Let your name be praised. Peradventure, there is anyone not yet baptized here. Convict them that they make a decision for you and walk with you all the days of their life. Bless the leadership of this program. Bless their families and bless the works of their hands. May you meet us all at our deepest points of our needs. May you remember us in your kingdom as you come again. Forgive us, Lord, where we felt you and let you down. May your name be praised. Your name be glorified forever and ever. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen Pastor. Amen.